We should be going live right now. So apologies to uh, to those that are, are just now seeing us. We had a whale of a time with uh, various technological elements, but we are now live. Um, Neptune should be sharing this shortly. Um, so if you guys are, are just now tuning in, welcome. Welcome. We're apologies that we're, we're fashionably late for this event, but I, my name is Jack Hire. I'm the social media guy at Drew Estates. Uh, tonight, I'm just going to be your MC. I'm just going to be kind of introducing you to my friends, telling you about the deals that we have this evening, some of the amazing opportunities that our friends at Neptune are uh, passing on to you, the customers. So I, before we get into it and I introduce everyone to you, I am going to kind of go through some of the awesome swag and opportunities and stuff that you guys might have tonight. So anybody that buys a box of any Drew Estate product will get our new Shade for Days tin. So you get this wonderful, wonderful tin and that contains a Undercrown Shade power bank. It has a amazing Undercrown Shade floppy hat. This is like the, uh, your day out on the beach. You know, I, I know most of the country has a beach around it. So, and this is your, your neck gaiter to keep the COVID off you. And then there's a nice little, little pool bag. So another important thing for the first 100 people that buy a box of cigars, you are going to get a year of the rat for free. How about that? And uh, we also have some amazing uh, raffles that are going on for those that buy the package. We have some deals on if you want to buy a box of Liga Pravada. We have our amazing Liga swag kit. Uh, the best way to see all these deals at any point is to just go to NeptuneCigar.com and check that out. Now, before we introduce our guest of honor, Jonathan Drew, I want to talk to Luz. Luz from Neptune. Luz, how are you doing this evening? I am doing well, trying to share the link. <laughs> How's it going for you? Uh, well, you know, uh, not well, but I'm going to share. That's all right. But uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to this event. We're very excited to be here with Jonathan and Jack and uh, Brian. Um, Why did you say you said Brian as if you weren't weren't as excited about Brian being? I was, no, I was looking. For Brian. <laughs> I am. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll I'll let you I'll let you handle sharing this out. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, don't feel afraid to uh, to stop us if you're having any technical difficulties. Um, I see I see a lot of a lot of my pals around the room, but I'm going to start by introducing Mr. Jonathan Drew JD. How are you doing tonight? Great man, and I'm glad we're here with the Neptune crew. Uh, Looking forward to this. It's been a long time coming. So uh, good. And I'm excited, Jack. So everything's good. We were doing a little wheeling and dealing, JD. It's kind of the Drew Estate way. Like things things go left, we go right. We, we're back on track. Boom. JD, I didn't even tell people about the the umbrella. Now, I know it's bad luck to have it inside, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up this amazing. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that cigar swag would reach this point that we've gotten to now? You know, you always mo ask the most insightful questions. Um, <laughs> Never no, about tobacco or factories or stuff like that. It's always like, what kind of cereal do you like, JD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. You know what? Um, we make really cool swag. The people love it. It connects to the brands and it's fun. So uh, it's great to see the, the team just coming up with cool stuff. And I think we got a really... I think that the, the swag for tonight, both for the Liga buyers and for the people participating in the Liga, as well as non-Liga with the Undercrown Shade for Days, I mean, some of the swag is so funny, and it's like, yo, some of it came out here. I'm in the Hamptons in New York. I drove out here, and you guys sent me a box of the swag for days, uh, the Shade for Days, the Undercrown, and I opened it up, and I'm at my friend's house, and his wife's like, oh, my God. And the kids are running in like, yo, I want this one, and I want that. And people are fighting over all sorts of stuff. So I think you got really good promos for the event. Neptune has been a partner of Drew Estate for so long. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, this is the way we're connecting with each other. So when I look at the screen, and I see some of the people who are on here with us tonight, uh, and uh, we're doing Neptune. I'm very happy, man. you know, let's get this uh, Facebook stuff square away. We're transitioning to, where are we transitioning to? So uh, I think I'm hoping Neptune is able to share this right now. Right now we're on the Experience Acid Facebook page, JD. Um, we're, we're hanging out. I'm going to uh, mute our friend Shelly. Um, but 
Luz, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. We we talked before uh, we talked before the show, and there's kind of some similarities between Neptune and Drew Estate. You, you Neptune is what you started in right in the early 2000s. Oh, you're muted, Luz. Hang on one second. Okay, so 1999 we started. We celebrated our 20th anniversary uh, last year. Um, and uh, we were the new kids on the block, just like uh, Jonathan was in his time. So, um, you know, I think, uh, when did you celebrate the 20 years of acid, Jonathan? She, I have no idea. I 20 just, years of acid was last year. Yeah, I, we've been way around for that. We, I'm, I know that you guys... Uh, what I love about our two companies, not only did we start probably around the same time, we started in 90, 90, Super Bowl Sunday, 1996, was the first day that we went into some kind of business as Jonathan Drew Inc. But um, you guys also later on were like around the block from us. And I had no idea you guys were so close to us in Florida. When we moved there, I would see your trucks and stuff like that. So we really have a very connected past and, and, we will have a connected future as well. Um, JD, with with this event, we're we're doing kind of a Miami a Miami episode. Now we're we're a New York brand originally started in New York, but you know, for how long has have you been in Miami, and how long has the office been down in Miami? Yeah, so you know, we always talk at True Estate about like our New York centricity. Uh, I'm proud to say I'm here right now. I'm out in uh, Sag Harbor, out in the Hamptons area. And uh, that's always been something really important to us. It's about our roots, right? You know, I was talking to a couple of the guys today and I, I was like, man, Drew Estate got a thick culture. We got a thick attitude and, a, and an accent. Everything we do is kind of kind of hardcore. And, and New York, I mean, there's just Brooklyn, New York, Strong Island, Staten, Queens, written across everything that we do, no matter what's going on, people are zigging and zagging. And, and we got, you know, we're, we're there in a New York minute. So New York is always centered to our, to our culture. And so many of the attributes that we've brought from New York into our brand philosophies, as well as our branded house, the Drew Estate, separate from Liga, Undercrown, Acid, Bing Bang, Boom all the way over to Nicaragua. So moving between that, that New York mind space that we, we live in and Nicaragua and our culture there and our factory in Nicaragua and, and what, we, what we've done over the, man, over the last 20 plus years in Nicaragua and how we've affected so many hardworking people, Nicaraguense who have, you know, work at our factory thousands not a couple of hundred people which is great i remember when we had a 242 people and we had a fire everybody at the factory in uh, 2004 or two the shock waves through our city of esteli and you know making the front page of the newspaper la prensa and the government coming to us and saying what what happened when and and us preparing them for this you know that new york centricity nicaragua centricity Miami was an add on much later. So when you think about the Drew Estate brands, uh, the way we look at brand building and what passion we bring to it um, was really New York. Then on top of it, layered in with Nicaragua. And then we doubled back as we made Willie Herrera, our master blender in Miami. And we were never really a Cuban style company. Our leadership wasn't Cuban. Our heritage wasn't Cuban. And we don't make Cuban cigars or use Cuban tobacco. So we came with a whole different philosophy to the game. And then bringing Willie on, we kind of like, while people were getting, yo, what Drew Estate's doing, yo, they ain't going to get 10 years on us no more. We're going to check them. We're going to check them. We're going to get creative too, like Drew Estate. When people, as people were moving towards where we were, we doubled back with some real traditional conservative approach by bringing Willie Herrera on as our master blender, who's deeply Cuban. The dude's six foot eight and very Cuban. So, you know, that, that that's for us, Nicaragua, New York, Miami, Little Havana. And we triangulate in that space right there, Jack. Triangulate. 
I love it. You always, every, every time we do one of these, you kind of introduce a new word into my lexicon. It's like I, you're like a walking a thesaurus of various, various words and phrases. Now, JD, we're about to celebrate our, our 25th anniversary. So Neptune just celebrated their 20th anniversary and Drew Estates a year away from our 25th anniversary. What is, what does it mean to, you know, have this company and be at the head of it for 25 years and be able to work with amazing partners like Neptune and do kind of events like this moving forward? So, you know, uh, I think for me, as you started to get into that question, you know, the first part of it is 25 years. Think of it like this, ready? Every year, your employees, as, you, as you're blessed to, to grow, you have more employees, more people at the factory, more of the families depending on you. And as I think, as our company has grown after these years to becoming you know, one of the the biggest factory in Nicaragua and supposedly the second biggest in the world. But I think we make as many cigars as Cuba. And I'm not even kidding around. I'm talking straight right here. You know, whole country. So um, globally. And um, the responsibility that that brings. Sometimes, you know, I feel real strong and I feel powerful and like, you know, proud. And other times I feel nervous and, and scared and I care about our people and, and I think about our industry and politics and things. So I think it really, uh, there's a certain space of vulnerability for me that, you know, I feel that it's our obligation to lift our people in Nicaragua up who've given us this platform that we're so fortunate to live in and obtain as Drew Estate. And at the same time, our consumers who say, you know, every day I smoke a Drew Estate cigar. They might smoke a Drew one, you know, one day and Padron the next day and Fuente and back to Drew. And they might start with acid and go to Liga and come back to acid or natural, whatever it is. I feel very much so that we have an obligation to them. And, and when, I, when I look at where our company is going uh, after the purchase, it's five years, six years later now, you know, I'm proud to report that. I see my man Kevin on the screen, K Mac. He's been with me 20 years or 19 years, some shit, a long ass time. And 17, long enough. <laughs> 17 years. So, you know, when I look at the, at the, the roots that build this, this wall brick by brick, uh, I feel as though we're going to be able to continue to, to build and, uh, and, you know, continue to, to, to drive, you know, uh, a good lifestyle for our people who contribute. So it's both sides, consumer and, and at the factory level. And then loose, you know, look, Neptune is the cherry on top. Uh, these people are competent. Uh, these are, are competent retailers. When you buy cigars from Neptune, they're fresh. When you buy cigars from Neptune, they come on time. They have great customer service. They've built a huge company. People don't even realize it. They think it's all oh, little Neptune. No, Neptune's global. I got dudes in France and Germany, or uh, um, Amsterdam complaining to me, who's that Neptune getting into all my business out there? These people are very smart. So partnership wise, this is the kind of company because Drew Estate plays hard. We always played hard. We're playing to win. People know that. And uh, Neptune, um, you know, they're playing to win too. So we're having a lot of fun with it while we carry a lot of responsibility. Now, now, Luz, we have some pretty amazing raffles tonight. Do you want to tell some of the folks that are tuning in, maybe on Zoom or on Facebook, some of the some of the swag that we're giving away and how they can get their hands on that? Okay, so uh, right now there's two sales uh, campaigns on the website. If you go on the homepage, you can click on Liga Privada or the Drew Estate Shade for Days um slide and it will take you to the brands that um you know that are made by this great company and um if you buy 10 cigars or more you get two rock glasses if you buy a box you get a you know some a swag kit and uh the first 100 orders are going to get a year of the rat cigar now i've had people asking me for this cigar for months maybe even over a year. So this is your chance. If you want to get that, this cigar and you haven't been able to get it, place your order. First 100 orders are going to get that cigar and they'll be entered in a raffle to win a beautiful Drew Estate uh, Liga Privada Humidor. Now this thing is a work of art. We have pictures on our Instagram and um, 
there will be other prices as well for those uh, that don't get the humidor. There's ashtrays, there's uh, Year of the Rat, um, a loom lighter. So there will be something for everybody. Wonderful. Now I think we should check in. We, we have some we have some uh, Neptune peeps around around Miami and at the stores. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna randomly call on Edwin. Edwin, are you here? Do you hear me? I, I didn't know, you know, I don't know who's busy at the, at any given moment. So how are you doing tonight, Edwin? Good, and you? How's everybody? I'm doing great. So wh where are you coming to us from? Uh, from Miami, from the Dayland location. And well, I'm getting a little feedback. Is Who's somebody next to you listening to this as well, I'm guessing? Yeah. No, no, um, no problem. What are you, what are you smoking tonight, Edwin? I'm smoking the Liga A. Oh, now we have some of those. If somebody buys 40 uh, Liga Pravada cigars, we have a limited amount of Liga A's. What do you think of the A? This is an amazing cigar. And if you know something, you can only get this cigar when you have an event with Jonathan. So it's your chance right now. I love it. Now, now tell people about your experience at Neptune and why, why they should shop with Neptune with you guys. Uh, Neptune, we did not sell cigar. We sell the experience. When you come here, we show you way how you do to get the best cigars out there. One of them is Dewey State. And we always have the limited edition all the time. That's, that's wonderful. Hey, thank you so much, Edwin. We'll check back in in a little bit. Now, back to the man of the hour, Mr. Jonathan Drew. JD, we've gotten some, uh, we've gotten some questions submitted. Um, and especially when we're talking about the year of the rat, everybody wants to talk about the name Year of the Rat, uh, not not just specifically, and we can get into that, this cigar's origin story, but uh, one of the questions we got submitted before was how do we come up with some some of the crazy and unique names that we have for the cigars, like the Flying Pig, Papa's Fritas, Nasty Fritas, Velvet Rats. So do you want to do a little bit about the name of Rat and, and how kind of we come up with some of the names of the cigars? Yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, come up with that all those crazy names for 20 something years because I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> but, uh, separate from that, um, we always kind of we got so deep, Jack, into like you know the brands and just having fun, and and it was kind of like that lab attitude, you know. And we would be like, Yo, we're in the lab, it's fourth quarter pressure. Uh, what's popping and we always uh our experiences you know going to europe and coming back and you know go for my first time years and years 20 something years ago and coming back and just saying like this is what i learned and this is where i'm going to apply it i think the true estate you know the names are like i talk about if you if you come out with an album and it's your first album and you're like the Rolling Stones or um, Run DMC or or I don't care who it is, uh, Migos. Your first album has got to be so raw because it's all built up, it's pent up, and it's just it's just juicy. And that being in the cut, raw feeling for us, I think that every product we bring out has got to be like it's our first album. It's got to just be raw and uncut. And don't worry, don't worry about being, you know, six generations in Cuba and 15 generations here that don't, those people are there. And Padron's doing their thing, and Fuente's doing their thing, and they make great products. It's not about outdoing, you know, you make a better product than Padron. You gotta make a better product than that. It's about making your own path. So where's that path, you know, what does it lie to us? And, and the names, I always say like, look, don't try to like, if you're coming out fraudulent with some nonsensical sounding thing that's just, you know, doesn't fit you, we've made that mistake. People look at all the successes at Drew Estate and they go, yo, these guys are crazy. Look at all the successes, Liga, Acid, and this one and that one. Yo, think about how many brands we came out with DOA, dead on arrival. Shit wasn't right. We were either 10 years ahead or shit was just hokey. And it didn't hit right, or the flavor, the taste was one thing, and the packaging just didn't connect the, the ditto politic, didn't miss it. So the names are going to be like, what's popping at the moment in our hearts? What are we going through? 
Typically, Jack, it's some kind of pain that's involved. I, I talk about it all the time. People don't get it because I, I drive back to it. Culture is not from pleasure. Culture is driven from pain. And you don't say, oh, yeah, the food you eat is your culture. And we're dancing merengue, reggaeton. Everybody's reggaeton in, man. I've been listening to Latin music before. I don't even think reggaeton was out there. Southside merengue, grupero from Mexico. And then reggaeton hits you. Know, your mood changes. And all of a sudden, there's reggaeton in, in your cigars because the, the rolling floor at your estate is full with 2,000 people dancing to reggaeton and you know you see him moving and you go in there and a drew estate factory floor is different than any factory floor in the in the world the only factories that ever in the world could like in my opinion could hold up to to drew estate is like the old cuba back so long ago before castro when they'd have the readers and that real deep traditional cuban culture on the factory floor Drew Estate, you come to our factory and thousands of people have come at Cigar Safari. You come to our factory and you feel the reggaeton, you feel the salsa, the merengue, the, the plano from, from, from Panama. And people, you know, you don't got to raise your hand to go to the bathroom or, or, or be a little late to work that day because your kid needs it. No, don't worry about it. There's a positive feeling on the floor on our production floor, the Grand Salon. And para nosotros, este es un sentimental. We are sentimental people at Drew Estate. We want to get that sentimentalness in it. So if you, if we're feeling strong, we might come out with a, a very powerful brand that's got some kind of, you know, underlying backbone to it that's just you're feeling yourself. Other times you're feeling like, wow, you're exploratory. So a lot of the names that we come up with are something that's very, you know, very uh, personal. Very personal. Robustos is a nice word, but robustos just ain't how I'm feeling. I love it, and uh, and it definitely makes things makes things interesting. And it's uh, I think that that the Rat series and the Year of the Rat and a special cigar like this, which, by the way. I'm going to continue to be uh, hawking, hawking some of the deals. Um, if you buy, if you buy any box of cigars, uh, 20 counts, the first 100 purchasers are entered in for the raffle, and you also get a, a year of the rat. So again, we have the the shade for days. If you buy any any two boxes, you get this beautiful umbrella, just for just for the bad weather season. Um, so JD, I, I, one of my favorite things to hear you talk about is is our factory and what it's like to to go to our factory and the experience of La Grand Fabrica Drew Estate. For for those that have been on Cigar Safari and maybe those that are watching that have not been, kind of paint a word picture of what what it's like to go to our factory. Yo, when you walk into Neptune, so again we live in the same neighborhood. You know, their their stores are right by us. So I, you know, when you walk into a Neptune Cigars, it's their superstore. It's called Superstore for a reason. You got, oh my God, look at all this stuff. Drew Estate for days. You got this for every product, everything we got. And then the Monte Cristo and the and the Romeo, whatever. And you're like, oh my God, holy shit. I got, I got to call my wife. I'm going to spend a little more than I thought I was because they got that selection. And your brain box is busted. It's like, oh, wait a second. I'm going to grab four of those. And oh shit, they got open. Oh, and then all of a sudden, you filled up a whole tray and you know you paid the right price. You feel good about it. You bought more, but you, you had that. Your brain was just like, oh, my God, so many great cigars. And they're talking to you in that humidor. And you're like, I, I want you all coming back. When you go to Drew Estate, that shit's some sensory overload. You know, it's some sensory overload. It's like we, you know, you come. To, you asked me about the factory, right? Yeah, yes, you, sir. You go to the factory. I mean, it just makes me smile. I've been speaking to the ambassador over there over the weekend, the last weekend, and we were just vibing out on on something. It's like Nicaragua is a country that went through revolution while all of you alive. This wasn't 300, 200, 1,000 years ago. Dudes are fighting. No. Everybody on this call tonight was alive and, and everybody here was here when you heard a con, you know, the, the Contra uh, situation and with Iraq and Iran and, and uh, arms for hostage, all sorts of majors like Nicaragua went through a revolution 
we were there right after the revolution in 92, Violeta Chamorro came in as the new president and the country has, is such a, you know, it's expressive in, in coming to Nicaragua and, and seeing every street having bullet holes in every house. Yeah, one house on the street didn't have the bullet holes. Our house, which was Nick Perdomo's factory before it became ours, uh, we were on the only street that was paved. So everybody walk on our street because if it was raining, you didn't get all wet. And we were between your, our, our address. You heard the U2 song, Street With No Name? That shit's about Nicaragua. So I want you to feel when you walk into our factory, you're going to be like, yo, Bono, he's talking about Drew Estate. Like, that's the street with no name. We were the street. My mom and dad was like, what's your, we have to mail you. I had no phone for like four years. We have to mail you shit. Wait, where am I sending it to? Oh, the old Texaco in Esteli. The old Texaco. Yeah, half a block from the old Texaco. That was our address. So... I want you to walk into our factory and, and be on that sensory overload like you are when you walk into Neptune. And I want you to understand the history of Nicaragua. I want you to feel the pain. I want you to feel the happiness and the beautiful people. So that's what we have to convey. And then we have to make sure we convey that in our cigars. So it's very conceptual and I'm a philosophical dude. So I feel as though that's our responsibility in being able to do that. So when people come to Nicaragua, when you're smoking our cigars, we're like motherfucking Mickey on your shoulder. You're like Rocky. And we're like, yo, yo, I'm right here on your shoulder. I'm with you. I'm with you. Blackie and red. You're drinking with blackie and red right here. When you're just eat, you know, that's when you're smoking a Jewish state cigar, we're with you right there in your heart. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, when you see the greats, uh, Carlito, uh, Don Orlando Padron, RIP, God rest his soul. You know, when you see the greats, uh, they're able to convey that message about everything that makes their cigars beautiful. And I think that that's something that we're able to do. And Luce and, and Neptune is able to, to find the best, not just in Jewish state, but in brands from Nicaragua. Dominican Republic, Honduras, Mexico, Brazil, all the places that 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 uh, Neptune's got up on those shelves, you know. So, Luce, I want I want to check back in with you. Um, I want you to talk about a little bit your experience with with Drew Estate and and how your your fan base and your customers react to Drew Estate and Drew Estate events, and, and you know, just kind of compliment us generally, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Well, you know, you guys are a fan favorite. I mean, uh, to me, it's like if you tell a customer, yeah, this cigar is great. It just came out, but who it is, Drew Estate, immediately, you know, they want to try it. I mean, that's that's just, that's the beauty of what uh, Jonathan and the whole um, Drew Estate has been able to, to bring out into the cigar world is people want to try your cigars. Um, and then there's the whole art scene and, uh, you know, it's just a fun, uh, great brand that, that just makes great cigars as well, because there has to be substance behind, but there's just a lot there. So for 20 years, we've been selling, um, Drew Estate cigars. We started with acid. We sell a lot of it. Uh, people do not get tired of this brand. Um, and, um, you know, then, then you guys came out with, uh, the traditional cigars and that was also a home run with Liga Privada. I remember, um, becoming a Liga Privada account. That was, a that was a big honor in the industry. If you got to get one of those accounts. So, um, you know, and then every, every time, you know, the cigars are not in the shelves, people complain. So you just, you guys just have a great portfolio. Great brand. Have I complimented you enough? I love JD. Well, <laughs> what do you think, JD? I think that that was, that was probably just the right amount. It, it didn't seem like you know, a total hostage video. I've never told Luce this situation, but across the street from her superstore is an excellent bagel shop. Uh, what's roasters and toasters. <laughs> roasters and toasters. And my mother loves roasters and toasters. And I'll do anything for my mother. And... <laughs> So I got to be able to finish up at Roasters and Toasters, have my bagel with my cream cheese and 
you know, my mom's got to get her stuff, this and that's and and right across the street, boom, you got you got Neptune. So, you know, uh, we got to make sure our bagels are straight and we got a spot to, to luxuriate right there. But of course, it's good. You mean, you know, loose her, her family, the way they do business. It's it's really what happens. It's the royalty of loyalty. Uh, people who. Man, you're never going to if you're making one hundred and sixty thousand, one hundred and sixty thousand long fillers a day, you're making as many cigars, I think, as Cuba. What I was saying earlier, this shit is sinking in. Damn. You, you know, not every cigar is going to be perfect. But as long as you come in the next day fighting like it's your first album, you're fighting to keep the, the, the lights on, to keep gas in the car. You got to get up the FDR drive and you're just saying, yo, please listen to my demo. Please listen to my demo. Uh, EPMD in the 80s. Uh, rap was being born. And, you know, you're, you're saying, people, please, please listen to my demo. Hear, what, hear us. And as long as we don't lose that, you know, and that's, that's, we can build. So as we go through all of adversities at Drew Estate, I've blown up the factory, uh, uh, wasted tobacco, uh, burned through shit, uh, all sorts of disasters. But every time we come back stronger, like Voltron kind of shit. And uh, this is where we get to now get really sophisticated because now we're a little bit older. We're a little bit wiser. Uh, we know being earnest, what it means to be earnest and humble and being able to, the new Jacks like yourself, Jack, you know, coming on board and, and being such a, a great MC and digital guy and working with our guy, Joe Grow, he's on board here. You know, you see various true estate people with us tonight. Uh, why don't you give them a call out? Because, you know, these are our people right here. Well, you mentioned you mentioned Joe Grow. I saw him. I saw him earlier. I don't know if he's on, but I think that this is this is a good time for the Brian Bird, the Brian Bird minute. And I saw him just kicking his feet up, hoping he, I didn't call on him. Now, Brian, uh, you get the opportunity to now. I kind of force Luz to compliment us. Now you have to do the inverse. I want you to talk about kind of working with Neptune and what your relationship is like with the team over there. So far, it's been great. I got to tell you, um, I really, I've watched Neptune from afar in my prior uh, experience in the cigar industry and was, uh, I always kept an eye on them because I always saw them as a threat. And now that I'm working with them directly, I can see why. Um, they got a great team down there. They got a great stores. Um, Blues has a hell of a business, uh, has a great has a great mind for future parts of the business. And uh, my last visit there before the whole COVID hit, she blew me away with a whole uh, new uh, venture that I was upset that I didn't come up with in my previous life. Uh, so I'm hoping that's doing really, really well for it, but they're great. They're very easy to work with. Um, and from what I can tell, they have, uh, they have a lot of room to grow in this business for sure. Well, th well, thank you, Brian. You can go back to, to kicking your feet up and, uh, and you know, relaxing and smoking and watching us do the talking. Uh, thank you, because uh, per personal speeches is not my thing for sure. Yeah, that's why I always try to, I always try to pick on you at least once. I, I feel like I have to. <laughs> um, now, I want to – I see a lot of people on the screen, uh, some of you I'm not super familiar with. So if you want me to tag you in or if you have a question or something, there's a Zoom group chat feature. So go ahead and send a message out and say, hey, I have a question for JD or this or that, and I'll, and I'll tag you in. Um, but JD, I want you to talk about, for, Lou's mentioned it a little bit, but I want you to talk about subculture studios and, and I want you to talk about art for a little bit. Now, whether that's your personal experience with art or our company's experience with art, I'll let you kind of choose your own adventure on this one. Yeah, so, yo, one of the dudes on the Facebook, because, you know, we got a little fucked up tonight and everything like that, but we don't care because we love loose. And, and we got a little messed up on our digital situation, but I was looking over at our Facebook uh, stream that's Experience Acid tonight, which is a substitute, and then I think Loose is broadcasting that on Neptune. And one of the dudes said, George said, tried to bury us, didn't know we were seeds. And, you know, that shit caught me right there because everybody said, yo, these guys, forget in the beginning when we started, but when we moved to Nicaragua, um, 
all the people come to the factory and out and we were spending money on the new factory. We had like at the time, 11 factories in Esteli. So our city is Esteli. It's the second biggest city in Nicaragua. We're in the North in the area of the Segovias. And we're one of the cities of the Segovias, the main driver. And uh, all the Cubans, all the people who had come in to build the cigar factories are in Esteli or Condega, but, but everybody's in Esteli. And uh, as we, as we built, you know, I'll get comments back like, yo, JD, uh, this was early. Nobody had big factories that you sleep at and big safaris. And we were the only idiots. Uh, the elections were hot news and we were just building. And they were like, yo, when Drew Estate goes out of business, I'm going to get that factory. When I heard that, I was like, yo, that shit put fire in my veins. No one's going to do that. That's impossible. So, you know, for me, it was like the challenges and the art. When we started saying, yo, our artwork is graffiti. It's not some street art shit. It's not some this shit and that shit. It's, it's about expression. When you look at Instagram, it's about getting up and, and having your image recognized. Graffiti is the earliest essence of that is, is getting up getting up, getting on that wall, holding that wall. You might hold it one day till somebody else paints it over. You might stand in front of the wall for a week and hold that wall for a week before someone paints it over when it was a train in New York City, holding up your space and holding your block, representing your block. So we put so much of that into our brand that the fundamentals, the brick on the wall, each brick, each, each one teach one across the board. So we've taught our people and the art has spoke to us and really given us, uh, you come to Drew Estate Factory and there's 50, five, zero full-time graffiti artists. They don't come on the weekends. Yo, I'm going to work a little on the weekends. These, these are dudes have been there for 15, 18 years, 50 guys. You know what I'm saying? We had, so it's for us, the artwork is, uh, live. It's about being live. And, um, uh, having swagger. So a lot of the art that we bring into our, even when you see something so traditional as Liga Pravada, you see that low and brown motherfucking pointed lion or whatever shit you want to call it, that pointed griffin. You know, that griffin is there with you. And uh, when we represent it, we move and transition it to a wall and talk about how you can have that very um, traditional uh pointed griffin lion how that can mix with graffiti how that can mix with 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 culture uh that's where i think art you know going back to picasso uh guernica art art our art in terms of artisanal when you look at a cigar people go oh yo yeah so that cigar you know must have been that's cigar, we, we, we position our leaves correctly. When you're holding up a Drew Estate cigar, that cigar at the foot, you should see at the center of that cigar, the lijero, the darkest leaf, dead in the center. That's where your lijero needs to be so you get a conical burn. When we, our quality control in Nicaragua is deep. I never saw so many blue shirts in my life. You go into our factory, and the blue shirt's going to be a supervisor. It's not a draw testing machine and a machine and a machine. No. It's the cousin of Lester, the Marita Maria. She's at the at, walking around weighing the tobacco. That for me is that human piece to it. And I want to be able to catch that reggaeton, catch that New York uh, graffiti. I, and I want us to be able to transition that into the product and still be able to have quality control all day long fighting with production. That internal turmoil to be able to say to that cigar, well, what's wrong with it? It's a roto. It's a riecho. A riecho is going to be a rip off the wrapper and redo it. It's a roto. It's a second. What's wrong with it? It's got white veins. The head is not round. It's got candy color to it in terms of its color appearance. Uh, the weight of the cigar. You put that cigar in your hand. I need to have a roll and know he puts a cigar in his hand, a bonchero, and say that cigar is overfilled. You can't make cigars every year consistent if you can't make them every month consistent, you can't make them every month consistent if it ain't every day. So half the day you can roll a cigar that's stronger and the other half of the cigar day of cigar that's lighter, more mild. 
And quality control is the discipline. The discipline that comes with great trust comes great responsibility. So it's a mixture of the fun and it's a mixture of the responsibility. And I believe that art, you know, makes us dance. And that's what it is. It's a celebration. That's why when you talk about the Liga A that we gave loose for tonight, so so she could have them for her box buyers and stuff, uh, you know, that's that's a crazy cigar. You're not going to buy that cigar. It's a celebratory stick. And sometimes cigars are ritualistic. Every day I want to have my stick. I want to have two. And I want to finish off with a tobacco special. I want to have two full body ass, strong ass fucking cigars. And at the end of the night, a tobacco dulce. Nah, not in the morning with coffee. I want it at the end of the night. And it's something sweet and beautiful. But at the same time, uh, for us, you know, it's that mixture, Jack. It's that mixture of us being able to 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 bring our artisanal feel to it and just know it comes from our heart and it's not a boardroom product. As long as we continue to be a product of heartfelt, aggressive nature, uh, I don't believe that that will fall into the catacombs of of corporatization. Now, now, JD, I saw something crazy in our Zoom group chat. I, I mean, I guess it's totally believable, but um, Lou said something about a Mr. K-Mac that is, that is uh, in this chat. K-Mac, is it true that you were uh, the first rep? I was their inside rep in Newark, yes. What year so, was that? I believe you signed up end of 03, correct? Maybe around September, October? Yeah. It was, I was only there for a few months when I, when I uh, got Neptune. Yeah. And Luce called me. I didn't do a cold call. Luce called me. <laughs> well, it was actually it actually was no. Chris was Chris. Chris was the one who called around. I spoke to you a lot with backwaters, though. I know that much. <laughs> so so Chris went to the uh, IPCPR in 2003, and came back with a handful of cigars, and you know one of them was uh, uh, were acids, and uh, I remember smoking them in our uh, terrace and. And uh, going, I don't know, we just had like a fit of laugh, <laughs> you know, like the, we don't know what this is, but this is great. And he decided to bring it into the store and the rest is history. I mean, we had no idea the brand would take off like it did, but uh, every year, um, yeah, we'd see you. Good memories, Kevin, good memories. Well, here's the thing. I actually wasn't in, what was that? Um, was that Nashville or Knoxville? I forget that I wasn't there that year. I just picked up all the orders that were coming in by fax, laid them on everyone's desks and went home because it was trial by fire. It was there about two, three months when um, that I, uh, RTDA, pre-IPCPO, when that RTDA happened. Right. Um, so the first one I attended was actually in 04 in Vegas. And that was a sick show that I can't talk about. <laughs> you're, talking you're, talking about you're talking about orders by fax. This is some real OG stuff here. We did not have iPads before they existed. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you should have, but that, that's, that's amazing. Now, I, you also sent something else loose, and I know. Um, wait, like, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Go, sorry. You asked if Kevin was our first rep. No, no. Loose mentioned that. Um, yeah, yeah. So listen up. So here's the deal. So, Jack, you're going to love this shit, right? You got a pen? Right there. I got, I got a fax machine right in the corner. I'll send it. No. Our first rep, whoever we had was the first, was Michael Camacho. Do you guys remember the hit song, Let's Go All the Way? Let's go all the way. Let's go all the way. You guys remember that shit? No one remembers that. It was a fucking national hit. And I remember that. that. You remember Let's Go? You remember Michael Camacho? That was, I didn't remember the artist's name, but I remember the Let's Go All The Way track. Uh, that was like a big freestyle hit, like 87, maybe, 86. Yo, I think it was like a freshman in high school. It was a long time ago. He had an Alfa Romeo, and he, he was our first rep. His shit would break down all the time. We were always wiring him money. That was our first rep. Let's go all the way. That's amazing. Well, now this actually is a great segue. Um Curtis had a question for you. Curtis, would you mind unmuting yourself and asking uh, JD the question you sent me? Hey, JD, I'm a big fan, uh, especially I love the T-52s. 
My question, just listening to you and how you explain how art and culture, how influential is music in making your cigars? Is that Curtis? That would be me, yeah. All right, man. So it's it's so important. I mean, uh, it's so important. That's the beauty of, you know, uh, I, I think that like, just that feeling on the factory floor. For me, you know, you can like whatever music you like. You know, I personally love bachata. Uh, uh, more than reggaeton, even much more. And bachata is, for me, when you see a roller who's rolling cigars listening to, to Romeo Santos, and you're rolling, you're, you're listening to like, yo, Romeo Santos, a beautiful dude. He, he just, his voice and his aventura, when they're singing, you're, oh, man. Dude is like the modern Julio Iglesias, you know, for all the girls I've loved before. This guy, like, when you ever see Julio Iglesias live, you're like, oh, my God. Julio Iglesias is a god. And, you know, when you just have that music on the production floor and you're rolling underground, my man Pedro Gomez, I talked about Willie Herrera. Pedro Gomez, he is the best merengue and salsa dancer number eight in the United States before he went back to Nicaragua after com coming from Nicaragua to here. He would win competitions, giant competitions. And when your music, when the music is, is romantic, un, rom, uh, Music that just makes you understand a cigar is a romantic thing. If you're rolling it like a machine, you're rolling a cigar like a turd. You got to roll a cigar like you in love. And like if you speak to an employee like you love them and want them to feel loved and say, I want that back. Give it to me back. That's what I believe that we can do. And, you know, we look at our forefathers who did it before Drew Estate with great passion. Padron, Hoya de Nicaragua, Atura Fuente. These are companies that showed us a path that we could believe in to treat your employees with great love. And that love comes back. Music allows you to channel that. So I believe that, you know, these are the, these are the things that, you know, it's like, God damn it, that cigar is good. Oh, man. And you're smoking that cigar. Believe me, if, if they put the leaves in the wrong place, you go, yeah, that cigar is good. Sometimes it's good to hit and miss. That's the beautiful, the, the beautiful elegance of, uh, I believe, music drives it. And then secondly, um, your voice as a brand. I call it your, your branded house versus your house of brands. Acid is a brand. Liga, Undercrown is a brand. Then your branded house is our culture. And, and that's our lifestyle. So I believe that music is very important. And uh, why you see us do so much with musicians throughout the years. Or why you see Arturo Fuente with, with, with uh, Sandoval. And is because music is a is a passion. This is a passion product project at this time, at this point, you know, uh, for us, you know, uh, at Drew Estate, if we didn't just feel so vibing out, we were vibing. And I think that now with, with combining, yeah, I could go on and on, but basically Jack, uh, uh excuse me, uh, my man, Curtis, my man, yeah, my man, Curtis, where are you at, Curtis? I'm currently at home, but I'm in Miami, though. I live in Miami, and uh, I'm associated with with Neptunes. I lose. I thought you were familiar. You look familiar. So I'm Miami usually too, and uh, and uh, you know Miami is is a passionate place, right? So uh, you could go to get a cortadito, and it's just you know everything in life there is just. I think we've trapped that. So. Music's important, and when you come to Cigar Safari and the people leave in Nicaragua, spend three nights, four days with your estate, they go, yo, I never ate so good. Damn. 
that chef, I'm going to give him a tip like crazy. That dude can cook. And the gato with the blue eyes who's taking care of you while you're there, making sure you got everything in it. You know, I mean, I think that's it. It's a passion product. And it's so easy to get caught in the numbers. It's so easy to get caught in the profitability. And, uh, you know, Neptune, they're on a different side. They're upstream from us. They're, they're consumer facing in terms of their, how they, how they built their company and who they speak to. It's all about their consumer and the customer service. And, uh, Luce, do you guys have like, what's your, you got some what French music and, and Dominican. What, what, what's your, what's your music choices there? Bachata and some, uh, and so what? There's a lot of variety here. Um, you know, we're, we're stuck a little bit in the, the 90s, I think. <laughs> but uh, a lot of variety. Yeah, French music, too, and uh, rock and, uh, you know, some bachata. Throw that in there, too. Why not? <laughs> Luz, I'm going to have you highlight the deals one last time for those that are tuning in. So if you could tell people, you know, what to get, what's left, um, what you're raffling away, kind of give them one last sales pitch before we uh, go around the horn and sign off. All right. I'm not sure. Okay. So everything that you get on our website from Drew Estate is going to get you something. <laughs> is that good enough? I think that that's good. Go to NeptuneCigar.com. You have the full banners with all the information. Um, there's some crazy raffles. There's Year of the Rat. There's brand new toolkits. And there's the best piece of cigar swag I've ever seen, this umbrella. So, I mean, what are, they, what are you waiting for? No. So, um, yeah, so you have until, it's until supplies last. So, you know, try to be one of the first people to place the order. So you get the year of the rat, you get into the drawing for the beautiful Liga Privada humidor. I got to tell you, when people see this humidor, they're going to, you're going to be the talk of the town because this is a beautiful piece, beautiful, beautiful humidor, work of art. You want this in your home, get to be one of those first 100 orders and uh, you know it might be yours. Wonderful. Now I'm going to um I'm going to check back in and I think that I don't know Javier or Edwin are you guys standing next to each other? Can you guys combine onto one device cuz I I saw Luz posted here that you guys are both from Nicaragua. So I'm going to I'm going to unmute you Edwin. Do I do I have you? There we go. What's up, Edwin? So now you guys are both, you guys are both Nicaraguan. Edwin, you're from Esteli, actually? I grew up a block away from the first factory. You're kidding. That's amazing. From which factory? First one, the Perdomo house. That's great. So, JD, you guys were probably neighbors at some point. Wait, so you grew up, you're saying where, where I moved into first, the two floor? Yeah, that one. You want when you used to have the house like two, two houses out, out oh you were you were over near the restaurant Pancho yeah uh, Rancho you were on the corner by Rancho yeah on the corner where you guys did the first graffiti was by the Texaqua block down are uh, you on the other side over by uh Hotel Alpino yeah yeah Hotel Alpino I lived there for six months yo that dude's stomach was so full. Listen, was so full with rum. One day, when you looked at him straight, he looked like he was real skinny. And then when he turned to the side, his stomach was huge because it was full with rum. And I'm sitting there at Hotel Alpino, and he had his table. It was a plastic table with plastic chairs. And it was underneath a coconut tree. You remember the white dude, the gringo, uh, 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 at the Hotel Alpino, yeah. all right? And the fucking coconuts were dropping all around him. And every morning he'd go, come sit with me. He was fucked up all the time. I said, okay, what's up, uh, Rico? His name was Rico. And the coconuts never would hit him. They were falling. He put his fucking plastic table underneath a coconut tree at Hotel Alpino. My home at one street from, the, from us or our place. And I said, Rico, I've been here for three months. I sit with you out here and those coconuts are dropping, hitting the table all around you. How come they don't hit you? And he said, <laughs> homeboy said, 
They lack the authority. And I was like, oof. That, that was your corner across the street. Dude, you're on the street corner where the pizza place used to be, right? Well, yeah, around that area, yeah. I love your, your town. Listen, uh, I consider myself Esteliano at this point. I get very, uh, uh, every street has a memory. Every street in Esteli has a memory. That corner, those four corners, you guys know what Pete's, what's called Pizza Hut? In Nicaragua, when Pizza Hut was blowing up, we had something called Pizza Hot. And I would say to the guy, yo, you remember Pizza Hot? I would say they thought they knocked off the name Pizza Hut because you could open up anything in Nicaragua that was in the States just illegally. And they misunderstood it wasn't hot pizza because in Spanish it's reverse. It would be Pizza Hot is hot pizza. They thought the name Pizza Hut meant hot pizza. They didn't know the hut was a different fucking word. Yo, that was your corner. <laughs> I know your corner, son. I know your whole family. That's ama that's amazing. We'll we'll all have to get together sometime and get some some pizza hot. <laughs> just just for <laughs> they just for the whole time. Business. They oh. business. Yo. Well, well, I want to um I think that we'll uh we'll we'll wrap up this evening. I kind of want to go around and talk to some of our, our friends and family over at, at uh Neptune. But uh first I'll start with you, Luz. Thank you so much for uh hosting this event with us and uh kind of dealing with some of our technical difficulties, but uh holding strong. So uh thank you so much, Luz. And any any final words for this evening? Uh no, this has been great, very entertaining. It's great to, you know, meet again with an old friend. Thank you, Jonathan, for putting this together. And uh, it's great to know you, Jack. I mean, I hope everybody has enjoyed this as much oh, as I have. It's been wonderful. Now, JD, I'll give you the, the final word. Um, what do you What do you want to say to all the folks out there and all our friends over at Neptune? Well, first of all, to the people at Neptune, you're, you're, you're buying from a great company. You should feel good every time you buy from Neptune, whether it's true estate or not. Um, me personally, I'm very particular with which events I do. Um, sometimes it's because I, I haven't done an event with them before or a long time. Sometimes I do an event every year with them. Uh, Neptune is a, is a company who's close to our heart. So God bless them. And, and for those of you who support them, you're supporting a company who, who takes care of its people. I like the company. Uh, number two is on the, on with us tonight, you guys met K Mac, Kevin McCormick. He's been with us for 37 years, even though we've only been here 25 um, so you met K-Mac from New York and we got Joshua Roque with us and Josh, he's one of our brand managers. So he manages a number of our brands, Deadwood, he's running that brand and everybody loves it. He's killing it with that. And the Pappy Van Winkle and well, so many of our brands he manages and, uh, he's a young gun doing great. Brian Burge, you guys met, he's kind of the conduit between Luce and, and me and Jack. Uh, he manages our big accounts and stuff like that, which Luce and her company uh, fit in. Obviously, Neptune. Uh, you, we had uh, we had another dude on here, but either way, there's been a couple Drew Estate people jumping on board tonight, and uh, I just wanted to thank them for joining as well. And that's it, you know, uh, Jack. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to. Uh, uh, hook it up like it get the rebroadcast or something yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna download it and send it over to them so we'll have the uh the full video up on neptune's page as well probably later this night or early tomorrow but if if, if anybody missed it they'll see this part and it'll be like they were with us in spirit anyways yeah so i just also want to just say thank you to uh thank you to first and foremost you know uh tonight is about neptune Thank you to the staff, you guys in you're in Miami and stuff. And, and there's so many good cigars uh, and so many great brands and everybody's connected to Miami in some kind of way, but you still manage to show Drew Estate off and you, you, you don't let them forget us. Uh, you, you let them know who we, we got the flavor and we're a little different. So to you guys at Neptune, thank you. And for all of the people who, uh, you know, year in, 
and year out continue to make Drew Estate part of their rotation. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's we don't overlook it. It's something that we really recognize and it's built into our company of appreciation. That's why we try and give it back. We've built uh, many houses for people in Nicaragua through Mi Techo Mi País, which is my house, my country. We don't do ads about it and trying to get in the paper and look what we're doing. We just do it uh, big time. Cigars for Warriors, uh, we're putting cigars in the troops' hands, uh, service men and service women, not political. It's just about you know being a, a soldier somewhere and all of a sudden smoking a nice stick and uh, you know, that's important to us. So we want to thank people who are on the front line, people who work at Walmart, people who work at a deli, at a supermarket, um, doctors and, and nurses and policemen and firemen and people out there who are just hustling and in the street who are making, you know, taking chances to, to help everybody. We've been very lucky and uh, we're really honored to continue to be part of your lives. So that's a thank you from Drew Estate. Thanks for giving us a chance, and uh, uh, we love you. I couldn't have said it better myself, so that's why I, I don't and I won't. But uh, uh, thank you to everybody that is here on the Zoom, um, and thank you to everybody that tuned in. We'll have this downloaded and rebroadcast on Neptune later for your viewing pleasure. But uh, I think that's it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody, for showing up to our uh, our virtual event, and uh, next, see you next time. I think that's what we're signing off with. So. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you, Luce. Thanks a lot for everything.